Hello people of the internet, uh, today I'd like to talk about the uh, home servers and the NASes. Uh, actually when you choose a home server you have usually you have two options uh, depending on your skill and uh, your uh, usage scenario. First one is if you're a very experienced user you can build your home server uh, around the um, operating system you're going to use like uh, Linux flavored operating system like Freeness and Unraid and so on. Uh, it is very flexible approach. You can use your old computer or you can build a really powerful uh, server and uh, tune it uh, upon your requests and your needs. Uh, another approach is uh, for beginners like me. Uh, when you uh, use uh, pre-built NAS devices from c companies like Synology, QNAP or ASOS. Uh, it's easier for me to uh, go with the pre-built NAS because uh, it is, I don't need to go through the uh, learning curve of the new operating system uh, and I can save some time and it will be easier for me to use it. The only problem with the uh, pre-built NASes is uh, they cost more. Uh, you can, and the variety is kind of limited. I mean, you can go to the enterprise level NASes, but uh, the price is way, way above the level uh, I think every home user can handle. So to minimize the cost, you can use the pre-built NAS and uh, upgrade it. Uh, this you should be very careful when you choose a pre-built NAS because not all the NAS is upgradable and uh, you need to, to, to learn all the details first and then to make a purchase decision. Uh, personally, I have been using uh, Synology NASes for about eight years and uh, currently I'm using a DS415 Plus NAS from Synology, it's 4 by NAS. Uh, it has died on me recently and I have to fix it to do some soldering. Uh, if you probably know the, about the resistor fix for the Celeron processors from 2015, they have a bug. So you can check this out in my previous video. Uh, but anyway, so now it's uh, back to life, but uh, I don't know for how long and uh, uh, I decided to build a new one. Unfortunately, uh, hardware-wise, Synology NASes are kind of limited and slow. Uh, as I said, you can go for the enterprise level with Xeon processors, but usually for my needs, uh, it's an overkill. So I would pref prefer to go with the desktop CPU instead of the server CPU because I don't have lots, like a lot of tasks to do on this server but uh, the one I have requires some CPU power. So I decided to try a new brand, a new NAS uh, and to upgrade it. Please meet the QNAP uh, TVS472 XT. It's a 4 by NAS. Uh, it's an uh, 8th gen Intel low power desktop CPU capable NAS. It has two M.2 M slots uh, for NVMe SSDs, two PCI Express slots, 16 and 4 lanes uh, respectively, 10 gigabit Ethernet port, and uh, Thunderbolt add on card. By default, this NAS comes with a uh, uh, slow Intel Pentium G5400T processor. Uh, it's a two core processor and uh, four gigs of RAM, which is very slow and uh, you cannot actually do much with it. But today we are going to change this. I'm going to use this uh, NAS uh, basically for backing up all my uh, PCs and laptops. Uh, I will use a personal cloud storage. I will, use, I will run a Plex media server on this NAS. Uh, I will run surveillance server. Uh, all my downloads will go in there. 
I will be using it for photo and video editing. So those 10 GB connection is very good for this. And I will also run few Docker containers and other applications. So here what I'm planning to do. Uh, I'm going to replace the Pentium processor with uh, Intel Core i7 8700T. I will replace RAM and put 32 gigs in it. I will put four 8 terabyte hard drives, uh, two 1 terabyte SSDs. Um, and uh, I want to replace the main fan for Noctua. I like those more. And finally, I'm going to replace the Thunderbolt add-on card with the uh, NVIDIA GTX 1050 GPU for my Plex Media Server. So let's do it! So let's try to replace the CPU. Well, as you can see, it is indeed an Intel Pentium 2 core processor. So let's replace it. Replace uh, Thunderbolt card and to put in the SSDs, we will need to remove the power brick. So, power supply unit is rated uh, 240 watts. Uh, I'm not sure if it will be good enough in the long run, but we will see what will happen with the. Uh, more powerful processor and GPU inside it will definitely need more power so I'm not sure in all this build I'm not sure just about only the, about the PSU and since uh, it has like some proprietary connectors it will not be very easy to replace but I think it's manageable we can do something with it. fan manufacturer who is this fan manufacturer is but well, yeah I trust all my fans to Noctua brand so we will replace this with the one I know so this server is going to work 24-7 so I need quite reliable fans in it I'm not sure about this blower style fans and uh, CPU cooler, but uh, at least I can replace this one. So, now to the SSD. Oh, 
when putting in SSDs, QNAP uh, recommends to put additional heatsink on the SSD controller. Done. Now to replace fan and uh, to put in GPU. Now we are ready to put a video card in. You may ask, how are you going to put this video card in because it's uh, too big. This is a regular bracket for the video card. And uh, this one actually low profile, as you can see, it's uh, very narrow. Uh, but if you want to put more powerful video cards, something like Quadro P2000 or even more powerful, you will need a full-size slot for the video card. So in this case, because this uh, NAS is very small and for me it's uh, okay to use this 1050 uh, GTX 1050 card, even though it's uh, limited by only two uh, streams, simultaneous streams of uh, video decoding by drivers, but uh, I'm not going to use it anymore for now at least. But anyway, if you want to put a bigger video card, you need a bigger case. Uh, with regard to this uh, NTVS 7.2 XT series, the, the big brother, the bigger brother, a 6.7.2 model, the case of the 672 NAS is bigger and wider, so you can put the full-size GPU card in it. So keep this in mind, because you will not be able to put the full-size GPU in this 472 XT case. Luckily, this is a low-profile card, so I will be able to swap the bracket and to put a smaller one to fit in this case. And finally, to add hard disk drives and uh, some memory. After this we should be done. So the memory is actually accessible through the hard disk bay. So currently there is installed two two gigabyte sticks. We will replace it with two sixteen gigabyte sticks. 
it should be more than enough for the time being. booting up uh, I should say that uh, this configuration is uh, much much cheaper uh, than the similar configuration bought right from the vendor so I believe this is a good way to save money and to, to get a powerful hardware uh, for your home needs uh, definitely I will need to test this uh, setup especially the Plex uh, media server performance and how it's working because you know this uh, GTX 1050 card is uh, supposed to use to be used for the hardware transcoding and encoding oh I think it's uh, working hardware up initialization great so should you have any questions, please comment below and thank you. Bye.